Get out your calculators, get out your spreadsheets. Today, we're doing a design example. Hey, welcome back folks, Ricky McLean back for another Two Minute Tuesday. Today is a continuation of a two-part series. You can check out part one of the series, upper right-hand corner. Last week we talked about char performance, char design, fire effects, unexposed mass timber elements, particularly looking at a glue lamp beam. Today we're going to continue that conversation and give it some technical, practical application. We're going to run through some calculations and give you a design example of how to actually calculate a fire resistance rating for an exposed glue lamp beam. All right, so let's dive right into today's example. Let's assume we're working on a mass timber building. Our structural grid is 20 feet by 25 feet. So our span is 25 feet, our tributary width is 20 feet. We're gonna assume a uniform dead load of 60 pounds per square foot, a uniform live load of 80 pounds per square foot. And for this example, we're going to try an eight and three quarter by 30 inch Douglas fir 24F glue lamb beam. We're gonna check that first pre-fire for bending checks. Then we're gonna check that post one hour fire for bending checks. Now, disclaimer here, we're not going to run through calculations for shear, for deflection, for vibration. Those are checks that are applicable to projects. We're just not gonna have time to go through them today. All right, so let's dive right into the example. So first thing we're gonna do is just calculate the section properties of our glue lamb beam. You can see here running through these calculations, nothing new here, just calculating section modulus. We take our allowable bending stress, start at 2400, adjust that with a number of factors that we can find from NDS. And you can see really the only adjustment is the volume factor of this glue lamb beam, 0.85. So this is gonna drop our allowable bending capacity down to 2040 PSI. From there, we calculate our allowable bending moment, 223,125 foot-pounds. We're gonna compare that to our actual bending moment, which we calculate here using just WL squared over eight. We find that we have an actual bending moment of 218,750 foot-pounds. So that's telling us that pre-fire, our bending capacity of this glue lamb beam is adequate. It's close. We have a stress ratio of 0.98, but that's less than one. Therefore, this is adequate, again, just for bending. All right, so next we need to apply the char layer, char zone that we talked about last week and calculate what that thickness is on all three exposed sides of the glue lamb beam and then look at the section properties of the resulting beam that we have left. So in this case, we turn to NDS chapter 16. This is telling us for something like a glue lamb beam exposed for a one hour fire duration, that char zone is 1.8 inches thick. So in other words, we're gonna take our eight and three quarter inch wide glue lamb beam, subtract 1.8 inches from both sides. We're gonna take our 30 inch deep glue lamb beam, subtract 1.8 inches from the bottom, and then we'll run through the calculations to find out what our new section property is. So just running through those calculations, we have our new section modulus, still multiplying it by our allowable bending stress, gives us a new allowable bending moment but this time notice that we're including a factor of 2.85. Now this comes from chapter 16 of NDS. This is an increase, an adjustment factor that we can use. That factor does vary depending on the stress we're looking at. So in this case, we're looking at bending. Now we run through those calculations. You can see for a one hour fire resistance rating, this particular eight and three quarter by 30 inch glue lamb beam has an allowable bending moment of over 330 foot pounds. So this is a unique case. This beam actually has a higher capacity post one hour fire than it does pre-fire. And of course, again, the reason for that is because of this 2.85 increase that we can use on the allowable bending capacity. So therefore we've met the bending check pre-fire. We've met the bending check post one hour fire. And for bending purposes only, we can say that this beam is adequate. One thing to keep in mind too, is that a requirement when we are doing such a fire resistant de design of a glue lamb beam, NDS does require that we substitute core laminations with the tension laminations on the bottom of the beam if we're talking about a beam exposed on three surfaces. All right, and then just one extra design tip I wanted to give you too is if you look in the American Wood Council's document, TR10, Technical Report 10, there are some tables at the back, it's in the appendix, that provide some really useful load ratio values where they've pre-calculated the properties of given cross sections of, of beams pre and post fire. So if we were to go into this table for a one hour fire resistance rating for an eight and three quarter wide by 30 inch deep glue lamb beam, we can see this is telling us our load ratio is one point Zero. Note that none of the values in this table exceed 1.0, but essentially what this is saying is that we can achieve the full 
pre-fire bending capacity in a post one hour fire condition. Now just for fun, let's take a look at if we were to do this same exact beam, but for a two hour fire resistance rating. We're not gonna run through those calculations, but we'll go back to this table in the appendix to TR10. And what we'll find here is that our load ratio now is 0.63. So if we take our previously calculated allowable bending moment, which again was pre-fire, multiply that by the load ratio of 0.63. Now you can see our, our post two hour fire bending capacity is less than what is required for the given loads on this element. So therefore this beam is not adequate for a two hour fire resistance rating. All right, well, I hope this design example was helpful to you getting into more of the technical details and calculations. Thanks so much for watching today's video. As always, we will see you back here next week.